Bonjour, Year 11. I know you're busy learning vocabulary and revising for your listening exam. Um, so I thought I'd just jump on and give you some advice on some of the things that perhaps might catch you out in the listening exam and ways to prepare for that and hopefully try and avoid it. So when you're preparing for your listening exam, of course, you know that learning vocabulary is the key. Um, that's really important that you're learning vocabulary regularly. Every day, I would say, um, sort of 10 minutes at a time and small chunks rather than trying to learn big bits of vocabulary all in one go. But when you are learning vocabulary for a listening exam in particular, it's it's important that you think about the sound of the word. So not just writing the word down or learning it from uh, memory by the way it looks, but also thinking about the way that it is going to sound, because of course that's how you're going to have to identify it. So I'm going to run through um, some sounds today, some um, key sounds that may catch you out. Um, these are tend to be the sounds that will be very different in English and, um, and that can catch us out because what we're expecting to hear is quite different to what we end up hearing. So I'm going to kick off with uh, this sound here, k. The k sound in French um, can of course be written with a k, but not very commonly. Um, it's more common uh, to see this written down as a c, as in the word car, because, or combien, how much, how many. But also, and this is the one that catches us out, is often written with a q, u. And obviously in English we were going to hear that as quoi. In French you're going to hear it still as que. So words like qualité, um, which looks like quality, if you've learnt that and in your head you've been thinking quality and then you hear the word qualité, it can sometimes catch you out. So be careful with that sound, k, often written down as a qu. You hear it also in quatre for number four, for example. The next sound I want you to focus on is the sh sound in French. So would be SH in English, the sh sound in French. Now this is usually um, written down as a CH. So we would be expecting the sound ch in English, the harsh ch sound, um, but it's going to more likely sound sh in French, so a softer sound. And you can see this in the verb choisir, for example, to choose. And if we make that connection with the, the sound and almost transfer it back into English and make it ch again, it becomes much closer to the English word choose or choice. Um, so it can really help us with the learning of vocabulary and identifying that word as you hear it. So the sh sound as in choisir, to choose, also in enchanté, uh, which means delighted or pleased to meet you. And also we see it in the words cha, charbon, for example, and this would be um, in English a k sound. So in cha for cat and in charbon for carbon or coal. Um, so again, it's a, a nice, useful um, shortcut, essentially, if you hear the sound sh and um, either transfer it back to a ch sound, you might get closer to the English, or try it with a k sound, might be closer to an English word as well. The next sound is the e sound. Now, in English, we obviously have this sound, but we're more commonly using an i sound, especially in the middle of a word. Um, obviously, at primary school, you will learn things like the magic e sound, um, uh, making that middle uh, i sound more like an i rather than i or e. Um, that doesn't happen in French, so you are going to hear the short i or the long e sound rather than an i. So this is common um, in, in words that you've met already. So for example, hier, meaning yesterday. Obviously, you've got that silent h at the beginning there as well. In chemise, rather than chemise, uh, meaning shirt, so chemise. Also in utilise or utiliser to use. And again, this if, if we kind of transfer it back into English and think utilise, then it's more similar to the English meaning. You also hear the E in the T-I-O-N. So this sound T-I-O-N becomes sion in French, whereas in English we would say shun. And again, when you hear this sion, if you sort of translate it in your head back to shun, then you're going to get closer to the English word. For example, station is station. Circulation is traffic, but sounds like circulation, the circulation of traffic. Okay. 
The next sound is a really tricky one for us English to pronounce and therefore can be quite tricky to um, to listen out for and to hear and identify in um, a French spoken word as well. And this is the sound un, un. This is how it's written in the uh, phonetic alphabet, but un is how it sounds. Now we see this most commonly in the I-N in French. So whereas in English we would say in, in French you're going to hear un. So instead of intimidation, intimidation, and you've got the sion sound again at the end of that word as well. So this is um, a good one to remember when you hear that sound, un, if you translate it back in your head to the in in English, then you're going to get closer to an English um, word. Another example would be intéressant, interesting. Um, you also hear this sound with an I M in French as well, so you would hear it in important instead of important. And we also hear it in A I N, so train instead of train. So it's useful to remember that sound un can be I N, so in, or I M, so im, or A I N, ain in English. So this sound again, un. The next sound is the on sound. Now, um, this is a little bit of a shortcut, I think, really, for English speakers, um, especially just at GCSE level. We don't have to worry too much about the in little intricacies of the French language. There is a slight difference between on and on in French, um, but we're not going to worry too much about that kind of group these sounds together. So on in, um, in the French uh, words that you're going to encounter would be maybe an an in English thinking specifically about the word Francais, for example, French. You also hear it um, in the ENT at the end of a word, so normalement. And that can be translated, if you hear that sound en at the end of a word, is often li in English. So normalement, normally, lentement, slowly. Um, and you would also hear this sound en in the em in French. So thinking of the phrase, the word temps, or the phrase de temps en temps, from time to time. Um, again, that's a word that you would very easily recognise if it was written down, T-E-M-P-S, but maybe as you hear it, it's a little bit harder to identify. So practice uh, listening to, but also saying that sound en in the common words that you are learning. The last um, tip that I want to point out to you when practicing for your listening exam is more a rule rather than just a single sound and um, two rules essentially, the liaison and also contraction of sounds in French. So liaison is where you would hear a usually silent letter. We know that S's, T's, most consonants are silent at the end of a word in French. So if you were saying the cats, for example, you would say les chats, and you're not going to hear the S's at the end of either of those words, or in fact the T at the end of chat. Um, however, if that word that ends with a usually silent consonant is then followed by a vowel at the start of the next word, then you do hear the consonant. So thinking about grouping together, not just les chats, but les animaux. You hear the S as a Z sound, les animaux. This can cause confusion with English speakers when you're trying to identify a sound because it makes it sound as if the word animo starts with a z. So we're racking our brains thinking, what is a zanimo? But of course, that's not the word. The word is animo and it's um, being linked together or we're using liaison to link it to the previous word le. It's then becoming les animaux and flowing into the next word. So if you encounter a word in your listening exam or your listening practice and you think, oh, it sounds like a word I know, but I didn't think that word started with that letter, try taking off that letter. It may well have come from a liaison from the word before. Obviously, this only happens when words start with a consonant or uh, a vowel, sorry, or in fact, um, a vowel sound, so it could well be a silent H, for example. The contraction 
is um, where we would shorten a word to squash it into the next word. And you see this very commonly with your articles, the words for the, so le and la, being shortened to L apostrophe. And um, I think that's a, a really common thing that you recognise in your own writing to use. But again, this can catch us out perhaps when we are listening for a word, if we've just learnt the word on its own as a noun and not learnt that it can be um, contracted, it can be kind of linked into the uh, article, then you are hearing a word that starts with an L that perhaps you have learnt as starting with an A or an E or uh, another vowel. This can also happen with the word de, um, so of, and this obviously then also becomes a D apostrophe and it can make it sound as if the word starts with a D. So examples of um, contraction then that you're likely to see in your GCSE vocabulary, l'environnement, environment, the environment, instead of environnement, you're hearing l'environnement. Also in l'alimentation, meaning food um, or nutrition, l'alimentation is going to sound quite different to alimentation if you've learnt it that way. Okay, and those are two good examples of words with the other sounds in them as well. So l'environnement, environment, l'alimentation um, for food. And an example of the uh, liaison that you may hear in mes amis instead of mes Ami, my friends, mes amis, is how you would hear it. Um, also in des habitants, some inhabitants, some residents, instead of habitants, as we would perhaps be writing it or expecting it to, to sound, you're going to hear des habitants because of the silent H at the beginning of the word habitant. Okay, I hope this has helped you. Um, good luck with your revision. Please make sure you are doing lots of vocabulary learning. Little and often is the key. And um, listen out for those trick sounds. Bon courage. Au revoir.